Down two in the final seconds, Mitchell's forced to intentionally miss this second free throw for Cleveland to have a chance at tying it. Just like Doncic did to tie the game the other night, Donovan's able to secure his own free throw miss, but he doesn't get as lucky as Luka in terms of where the ball bounces. To secure it, Mitchell's forced to dive through the box out of Pat Williams and jump through both Love and Vucevic. Additionally, he's got to out-hustle the lurking Andre Drummond, not to mention his teammate Robin Lopez who's also going for the board. Doing just that, Mitchell takes advantage of his 6'10 wingspan to first extend out for the ball before leveraging off his right foot and lunging out on a 70 degree angle for the unbelievable game tying putback with 3 seconds left. Donovan Mitchell just scored the most points in an NBA game since Kobe Bryant in 2006 against Jalen Rose and my Toronto Raptors. 81. displaying he's one of the most explosively crafty bucket getters planet Earth has to offer. Let's break down why Donovan's so tough to hold in check and how he made history in the North Coast on Tuesday night. Before breaking down that, just 13.2% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already and leave a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Prior to last night, for the first time in league history, at least one player had scored 40 plus points on 10 consecutive days, as us fans have been blessed to witness all of this domination. Mitchell picked up where that streak left off in historic fashion. Down the stretch, even when the Cavs were down for the majority of the second half, the pace and flow of the game favoring them, combined with how Mitchell was tearing it up, just made it feel like, at least to me, that Cleveland was going to pull this one out. We have to give credit to DeMar DeRozan for an outstanding performance for the Bulls, who was keeping this game unpredictable. Scoring legend DeMar had 44, continuing to display he's one of the game's best off-the-dribble creators. Levine had 26, and Vucevic hit a massively clutch shot down the stretch for Chicago. So this Cavs team evidently had their hands full, and while Mitchell put the team on his back offensively, credit Jarrett Allen for keeping possessions alive down the stretch and finishing lob passes from D. Mitch. Without that, Cleveland would have likely come up short in this one, and Mitchell's all-time performance would have been wasted. But Donovan simply wasn't going to let the Cavs lose this one, as he was persistently determined to put as much pressure as he possibly could on both Chicago's backside and perimeter defense. He did so by either driving in the cup while attacking angles, going downhill on a line drive, or using elusive dribble combos to dice up and step back on perimeter defenders with his streaky, at times super effective, deep range stroke. When Mitchell finds a rhythm, he just has an uncontrollable way of dictating the pace of play. Whether things are working out for him offensively or not, and the man's had his fair share of off nights, Mitchell's defense is always first class. Donovan ranks number one among all shooting guards in defensive rating this year, opening up space for his scoring dominance to take over. After the slight screen and evasive slip by Allen, Drummond blitzes, Mitchell immediately whips a mid-air bullet to Jarrett, who collects it, soundly uses one dribble before stopping on a dime and floating it in with his offhand. This flare from Lopez turns into an on-ball. As Lopez sets the big body screen, Derek Jones Jr. cheats under it, which gives Mitchell about five feet of space to work with as he steps into a pull-up bomb. On three-pointers off the dribble like that, Spida's posting an incredible field goal efficiency of 44.7%. However, after the ball swung to the weak side and Love sets a down screen, watch the 30-foot range on this spot-up shot as Donovan releases it with the perfect amount of force and fluidity to get enough momentum and spin on it for the ball. Bucket. Speeding past Williams in the pick and roll and reading the stunt from Vooch and Caruso, Mitchell fakes either a spin move or behind the back pass, I can't really tell, with a stop and go plus Hezzy, fooling the paw before softly floating it over Vooch. Driving past Caruso and kicking it out to Levert in the left corner, this time he's going to relocate to the far left wing and get it back, then he craftily up fakes, drives left, euros around Vucevic, and watch the reach plus protected extension on this nasty runner. Ending the half in a semi-transition opportunity, this screen from Robin doesn't make too much contact, and really it's the prompt discontinuation and beautiful between the legs space creating step back which gets Caruso leaning, who tries to recover and fouls Mitchell for the 4 point play. That's just tough. Watch the track runner starting point like footwork Spida uses to begin this drive as Io's late to rotate over, Mitchell attacks with an evasive angle, gathers hang time and glides around Vooch. Donovan again uses an in and out move to gain traction as Levert slips and pops out to the top of the key. That quick twitch signature size up leads into a momentum cross to his off hand where Mitchell angles pass slash bodies off Caruso, Euro stepping and embracing the contact of Williams while hanging in the air for the and one. 
Empty side action with Seti Osman sees Mitchell shake up Levine by using his body language and first step to get Zach thinking drive before showing off why he makes 57% of his shots from the mid-range after taking 7 plus dribbles. Pick and roll misdirection off the bounce as Mitchell displays prime D-Wade explosiveness to his offhand, changing gears into the lane and outspringing Levine to get enough room for the floater plus the foul. Back-to-back -back dimes from Mitchell cap off the third frame though, as here he finds K-Love in a back screen action with Osman. Then he gets doubled and swings it to Seti. Chicago thinks they can help off him to start the fourth, but the scoring instincts to use every bit of space that's given to him to his advantage pays off, as the footwork leading into this catch and drive leads to yet another lethal take to carve up the Bulls. One-sided floppy action with Seti and Kevin sees Mitchell make a contested catch and shoot midi with Caruso in his grill. Half Smitty move near the logo sees Mitchell electrically speed around a hard blitz, then sweep through the slight stun of Levine, miss the bunny, but out hustle DeRozan, Dosumu, and yes, the seven-footer Vooch for the putback plus the foul. And Mitchell's hyping himself up afterwards saying, D flow, I deserve my damn flowers. Using another pin down, this time he locates Allen after a predictable trap. That drop off kept the defense guessing. Getting him the slightest bit of space on this next possession to penetrate the lane, and he knows he can get whatever he wants on Vooch. However, things looked pretty bleak for Cleveland when DeRozan hit the triple to put Chicago up 6 with under 2.30 left, but Mitchell just kept his head down and foot on the gas pedal, decisively mixing up his attacks and drop-off passes, eventually forcing OT with the dramatic free throw miss and putback, which was heavily evaluated in the intro of this video, and eventually finishing with a mind-boggling 71. What's Mitchell's best trait offensively aside from his flashing? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by March 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's shout out goes to Aminu MMA who says the thing that shocked me the most about Golden State is the fact that they've been so inconsistent in away games. I expected them to come out and show they could still be considered favorites for the chip. Pause to read the rest of that great take. Appreciate every answer. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.